We see a 20% chance of an afternoon shower or a thunderstorm after 3 today. Otherwise, look for areas of fog this morning, partly sunny skies, and a high near 87. Tonight's showers and thunderstorms are likely with a 60% chance of rain between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. and a low of 69. This is the award-winning broadcast of Healthy University, bringing health and vitality to you and your family, brought to you by Scotland County Hospital in Memphis. Now, here's your host, Dr. Randy Tobler. Doctor, my eyes have seen the Good morning. Welcome to the program. Six after the hour on Tuesday and uh, no longer a foggy day, but... Um, sure started out Yeah, that boy, you could have had that for the for the in and out music, And huh? when you looked at it, you would have thought that it was going <laughs> to stick around all day. Yeah. Now, when is it going to materialize into some rain? All this humidity. We need some rain, don't we now? Uh, yeah. We, we do. We, we really need some rain, and um, I think we're going to get some of it, but... Uh, the last time we were supposed to, it went I south know. and north of us, just kind yeah. of split around us. Um, it did the Yogi Bear on us. Yes, indeed. When you see a fork in the road, take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it took it. Yeah. So I, it's not desperate yet, though, right? We're just, no. We just need some rain. Well, I mean, yeah, we need some rain. Okay. We need some rain. Okay. Well, you'll have to put on your loincloth, beat the drums, and do your rain dance. Okay. Can I wait till it cools off, though? Yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> A lot of people like to wait and just to it never materialize. They'd be yeah. happy, apparently. Yeah. So uh, we have an interesting guest today, um, a uh, specialist uh, in skin conditions, dermatologist, going to talk to us a little bit about that. Uh, as uh, we should not oh, forget, we still have another month of summer left. And, we you know. do have. We do have. A, and did you see that thing on uh, uh, Tylenol, well, acetaminophen? And, uh, oh yeah, skin, fatal skin uh, reactions. That was, I think that I don't know. I'm trying to make sense out of that. Tell the, the story was interesting. I mean, I'm, well, I, I think it's. I think the thing that's interesting about it is uh, that there's only been like 174 of these cases since yeah. 1969. Right. Now, I'm not sure I got that number exactly right, but it's very minimal. Extremely rare. Uh, yeah. But. Uh, there are a couple of three other skin conditions that it seems that this uh, this medication is a, a little bit suspect on, and also um, there's no no reason to panic here. But still, it would be nice to at least know what some of the symptoms are, so that you could, you know, tell like if you have a burning on the skin or right. if you have uh, sloughing skin cells or or uh, pustules or something like that. But but anyway. Just to be able to know what those are. This would be, I think, I think in the category of one of those, you know, exceedingly rare things. Yes, that very if, much. If so. you take it at face value and take it to heart too too much, then you're not going to use Tylenol for the things that it's really helpful for and realize exactly. that. Exactly, and the painkiller that it's been yeah. for many years and how yeah. many people it's helped in how many different yeah. ways. I mean, it's safer to take a, acetaminophen, un- unless you're, you have an alcohol problem, drink a lot. Right. Or even if you don't have an alcohol problem, but drink a lot on a occasion and you take tylenol um yeah. and a lot of people do that for headaches not a wise thing you're better no. off to use an aspirin if you have that Absolutely. you know if you have a little if, if problem you, if you can use because the aspirin, there is yeah. that uh, to me that's the most dangerous and worrisome thing and i've seen a few cases of that i've seen young people who have had a binge taken tylenol and ended up with a near liver transplant yeah. because it can really attack your liver yeah. but this story about uh, you know f- fatal skin reactions i mean i just that uh, it could it be that maybe there was something else for which the Tylenol was taken that led to the skin, pro- or that was the skin problem. Well, I don't know. They, they try know. to separate but out these things when they yeah. do the studies. The but. FDA says this is a black box warning that they're putting on. Yeah, but the, yeah, the FDA approved the thalidomide decades ago, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm I'm sorry. I look. I respect the FDA. I'm glad they do what they do. It's good to have some people out there looking out for us. But sometimes, you know, uh, humans are fallible, and so are agencies made of humans. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, a black box warning. What that means is, uh, you know, that's like the worst warning you can get. Yeah, that's the top of the line there. But like you say, uh, if, for instance, uh, someone was to take a look at uh, the side effects of the common aspirin. Mm-hmm. There's like four or five pages of them, mm-hmm. and I'm not I'm not 
being. I mean, that's really true. There are that many. But that's because we've taken aspirin for forever, right. and everybody uses it. So uh, the tendency is, well, if there was anything happened, then list it as a side effect. Um, and sometimes I wonder, well, you know, yeah. how the, much the condition they're talking about is called Stevens-Johnson syndrome and um, another one, toxic epidermal necrolysis. Mm-hmm. That just sounds bad, necrolysis. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, these are rare conditions we see in other things. With Stevens-Johnson syndrome, sometimes we see in relation to people allergic to sulfa. Mm-hmm. Um, and toxic epidermal necrolysis, uh, that has been reported with um, people who can get toxic shock syndrome and things like that. So, yeah. I mean, there's not only Tylenol. No, no, no. And it's not, yeah, so it's not an exclusive right. problem or problems related right. to Tylenol. And I think Dr. Hertz, Dr. Sharon Hertz, who's the deputy director of the FDA's Division of Anesthesia, Analgies, and Addiction, mm-hmm. said, you know, it's not intended to worry consumers or healthcare professionals, nor is it meant to encourage them to choose other meds. But it's extremely people recognize and react quickly to the initial symptoms, which would be you'd get small blisters, you know, forming pretty much all over the skin. I mean, it's a diffuse problem. You wouldn't just get a little tiny patch of it. Not just isolated. And it has something to do with an allergic reaction. I mentioned that about sulfa. Mm -hmm. So you can have an allergy to anything, right? I mean, just look the labels. Now, there's not a label on any processed food product that doesn't say, you know, this food was made on, on equipment that processes dairy products or soy products or nut products or yep. whatever, or gluten, pro- I mean, you know. Yep. So at some oh, no. point, um, and then what happens is the skin uh, can, ap- can actually just sort of peel off basically in the other yeah. conditions. So that's not a good thing. I, the funny thing about these stories is they, they go to these great lengths and have these great press conferences and, you know, now, I'm sorry, if I suddenly start breaking out and looking like I have, you know, acute leprosy, you know, instant, my skin is peeling off just spontaneously, like something out of a bad Star Trek movie. <laughs> uh, do, do you think I'm not going to go to the to I the just, hospital? I, I don't just, care if I took a Tylenol or if I didn't. Yeah, I just sit this one out and see what happens. It's just sort of, yeah, I think, well, whatever, yes. my skin peels off all yeah. the time. Yeah. <laughs> and... So it's it to me it's patronizing a bit to the population when they say this. I mean, obviously, I mean people come to the emergency room because they have a hangnail. I know, doctor, but come. Who's to think you wouldn't go to the ER if your skin's peeling off? I I agree, but on the other side of the dial, common sense is not all that common. You know, sometimes people just don't get it. But in these parts, come on now. (laughs) <laughs> That's what's cool about people in in rural. They're common sense. Well, they do. Most Let me not. tell you how much common sense Uh-oh. we had this morning. Yeah. Uh huh. So we had that exact scenario. Two children, bumps You're... all over them, oh. itching. We used the new walk-in same or ah. same day mm-hmm. appointment service you did. just now at Memphis Medical. It was yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Yes, and two little peeps that are covered in. What is probably contact dermatitis? From tr- the Bible Grove Beach uh, Day? Yes, because little perhaps? boys were hiding in the ditch and weeds trying to uh, scare little girls on uh, the it's, flashlight oh, walk. Oh, I can just see to- Tom Sawyer and <laughs> Becky. So yeah. We are covered swollen <laughs> eyes, you know, the whole, you know, not skin peeling off because right. of too much Tylenol, but right. we do have swollen eyes and lots of itches. Right. And, and you didn't need an so FDA warning. I did you not. did not need I, the ma- I needed to call yeah. Memphis Medical and use their walk in service. And Actually, they got me an appointment go. immediately. So kudos so out there to you go no longer do you have to call at nine o'clock and wait for an appointment for you know if you have a problem like that just eight o'clock why the come on in and come we on do, in. we do want to mention something else that uh we're thinking about safety and kids and children and mm-hmm. scotland county hospital and our promotions and uh, those things that we like to be involved in one of them is the school kids it's going to be that time here pretty soon. So one Wednesday morning or Thursday morning when you get up, depending on what county you're in, you will find that there are a whole host of kids standing on every corner, and then you'll see the big yellow school buses, which means it's the day for school to start. And uh, In Scotland, Clark, and Knox counties, uh, school will start on uh, Wednesday, August 21st. In Schuyler County, I'm finding that it will be starting on uh, August 15th. So um, you'll see our ads in the papers in these uh, counties, but please uh, don't forget the kids. Uh, Watch out for them because they'll be out there, and uh, we just want to make everybody mindful of that once again. Also, 
There's some other things to talk about here, and I don't know if we really have enough time to do all of them or not, but we will be in a certified cardiac rehab show. It's our road show. It will be a community seminar, and it will be uh, myself and Chrissy Siegfried, and it will be this Wednesday, August 7th. It will start at 11 o'clock at the Knox County Nutrition Site. So if you're going to be there for lunch, stop. be sure and stop in that day, and um, <clears throat> we'll be there with gifts, prizes, information, all kinds of things for you from Scotland County Hospital Certified Cardiac Rehab Center. Also, I just wanted to mention real quickly the 5K during the Antique Fair, and that's Saturday, August 24th. It's a 5K or 1.5-mile fun run and walk. The registration begins at 7 in the morning over on the east side of the square, uh, uptown Memphis, but also then the race itself starts at 8 that morning. The entry fees, individual $15 before the 15th of August and $20 afterwards. Family, same household, is $35 before August 15th, and after that, it's $40. Uh, and also, all school-age children, K through 12, uh, have a special price any time of ten dollars. Uh, there's overall male 5k, overall female 5k, top three in age groups, oldest uh, participant, the youngest self-propelled participant, uh, the largest household. There'll be a uh, family membership to Scotland County Recplex, so wow. be one of the gifts. Also some running shoes, uh, cash prizes, there'll be Gift certificates. Now, folks, if you go to our website, which is scotlandcountyhospital.com, if you'll go there right in the center of the home page, you'll see a big blue 5K. If you'll click on that, it will give you the registration page, and you can just print it off, fill it out, and then make sure that people uh, and the hospital get that. And ahead of that, since uh, the farmer's market uh, meets up on the square and people have all the vegetables just rolling out of their out of their gardens, Dr. Heidi Gilchrist, board-certified dermatologist and a holistic skin expert, I thought is you would like us. that. Oh, I'm yeah, going to love that. Topic. And I'll bet yeah. she can connect the dots between gardens, <laughs> skin, skin health, and our upcoming 5K run. There you go. That is her challenge as we await meeting her after the break. Dr. Heidi Gilchrist joins us. And an interesting slant on your skin and its health. It's not all just about slathering on sunscreen, although that's good. But there's some healthy, natural lifestyle ways to make healthy skin. Absolutely. We'll talk to her about it when we come back. More yes, coming up on Healthy You. Stay right there. Back in a minute. You can find me love. No, 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 no. He amazes you every Sunday night on Nostalgia Sunday. Now you can own him with Middleton action figures. Every detail from his biceps of steel to his golden hair. Four figures to choose from. Kung Fu Donnie, Nostalgia Donnie, Secret Agent Donnie, and Lumber King Donnie. Also, new Fighter Pilot H. Middleton and Suave Andy Middleton. Middleton action figures actually do not exist. Not available anywhere. I'm just a kid, and I've got asthma. You know just how upset I can get when I have an asthma attack. But you can help me. To fight my asthma. Put my teddy bear in the freezer to wipe out dust mites. Dry off my rubber duckies and bath toys to get rid of mold. Discover other simple ways to prevent an asthma attack. Visit noattacks.org. Brought to you by the U.S. EPA and the Ad Council. Because I don't want to feel like a fish with no water. You and I are just like couples of pots Running around the meadow Picking up all those forget-me-lots You make me feel so young You make me feel there are songs to be sung Bells to be rung And a wonderful thing to be flung And even when I'm moving away I'm gonna feel the way I do today Cause you make me feel so young you make If only I'd have listened to the advice of the likes of Dr. Gilchrist when I was a kid and you took better be care of my skin, I'd, I'd look in the mirror and I'd be singing along with Michael, you make me look so, you feel so young, but I look in the 
mirror now and I go, oh, I got all these age spots and uh, what oh, did dear. I do? Oh, my. I didn't take good care. You were hard on yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I didn't know. I was a kid out fishing, ignoring all that. How you doing, Dr. Gilchrist? Welcome to the program. Doing well, thanks. How are you today? I'm great. So you're a doc after my own heart here because you're trained in a very solid, uh, you know, allopathic way with your fancy degree, right? And yeah, learned all the all Western the medicine and... Right, and more meds are better meds, and more tests are better tests. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that, but then you've added a whole different uh, load of tools to your toolbox, right? I mean, that's the cool yes. thing. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, medicine is, is sometimes an art. It's not always a science, and we don't always have all the answers we want to have in our, our Western-based medical training. So sometimes when that fails, we can look we can look outside the box, so to speak, and incorporate holistic and integrative therapies. So I, I think people are well uh, versed and, and educated in the fact that it's a good idea to protect your skin. And I think most of us now get that you should, you know, put on some sunscreen if you're going to be out in the sun and you need to reapply it. And, you know, we talked a couple of weeks ago about the FDA saying that, you know, you know, after you get over, what is it, a 30 SPF or a 50 SPF, you're not getting any more bang for your buck, really. It's not worth it. Uh, but there's more that you can do, right, from a lifestyle standpoint. And I guess the skin is no different than any other organ in our body. If we treat it well and take good care of it and nurture it, it will take good care of us. Absolutely. So the skin is the largest organ in your body. And while I agree that the message about sunscreen has gotten out there, um, I think what maybe people don't always realize is that sunscreen is not your first line of defense. Right. So radiation can get through sunscreen to a certain extent, and unless you have it on quite thickly mm-hmm. and you're reapplying every two hours, you're not necessarily reaching that level of SPF that's on the bottle. Yeah, yeah. So really, your first line of defense should probably be sun avoidance. So you want okay. to try to avoid the sun, meaning, you know, if you're going to go out for a run, go to the beach, play volleyball, you want to go in the morning, early morning, when the sun is, you know, is low down in the sky and not... The radiation is not uh, uh-huh. very intense. Or you want to go, you know, in that late evening, the last hour before the sun sets. There's a lot less radiation than an hour of sun at noon. Mm-hmm. But you, I, so, but are you an advocate? I mean, I, I always, I always struggle with this whole issue of avoiding sun and so forth because. I mean, I don't know. I think we were created to know when we're feeling good and when we, you know, when we're doing things that feel good or not. If I eat com- if I eat simple carbs and drink regular soda and eat potato chips all day, I go home and I tell my wife, I feel crazy bad. I just feel apathetic and lethargic. Similarly, I mean, when that sun begins to peak out a little bit more in the spring and I get a little bit more of it, I, I wake up and I feel jazzy and I'm full of joy and things are good. Now, and I think most people would tell you that, that, that feeling, you know, getting in the sun makes you feel good. Are, are, um, are we being deceived or not? No, you're absolutely right. They've actually done studies that show that sun exposure tends to lift people's mm-hmm. moods. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, some people are, uh, it affects different people differently, but some people, if they really don't get enough sun, they'll actually get a, a diagnosable medical mm-hmm. disorder called seasonal affective disorder. Mm-hmm. So a little bit of sun is good, you're right, but the light and the heat that is so comforting in the sun is Mm -hmm. different from the ultraviolet radiation. The sun makes all kinds of radiation. It makes visible light. Uh It makes infrared radiation, which is heat. Um, It makes ultraviolet radiation, which is um, very damaging to our skin. It gives off X-rays. It gives off gamma rays. It gives off all kinds of rays that are fortunately blocked by our wonderful atmosphere and yeah. our um, nice ozone layer on Earth. Yeah, so but those are essentially the same rays that are... That, okay. <laughs> so, so those X-rays and gamma rays are the same rays that you get when you're either getting cancer treatment, I mean, similar, or if you're getting a diagnostic X-ray, right? And we all know got that we'd it. like to avoid too much of that. You got it, and that's why they say when you go up in an airplane, you know, you're, you're getting a lot more radiation than you realize. Uh-huh. Um, so our atmosphere, we're very lucky, and our ozone layer blunts a lot of what comes from the sun, but the ultraviolet radiation does get through our atmosphere, and it gets through the clouds even. Now, and Doctor, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to emphasize again that that's different from light and from heat. Yeah. The ultraviolet radiation is invisible. You can't see it. 
So the infrared that you talked about, the heat, I mean, that's sort of analogous to, that's why we feel good when we're on a beach and why I always make the analogy to my wife that I feel like the chicken under the, uh, you know, at the, at, the, at the fried chicken place that they keep under the red light, right? Because it's just that right. heat and the warmth, and that doesn't hurt our skin. It's, Not it's at the all. UV it's stuff. The ultraviolet radiation, that invisible stuff that causes the, the damage. Dr. Gilchrist, right before you came on, we were discussing our farmer's market, the garden produce that everybody has in the Midwest and probably in your part of the country, which is California, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Right now, we are eating roast ears, we're eating peppers and zucchini and pickles and cucumbers. So you have a philosophy that is rather successful with yourself personally and your clients. Um, in terms of a plant-based diet and that nutrient-rich diet and the impact it has on our skin. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Absolutely. So all that gloom and doom, UV radiation I was talking about, you can neutralize some of that. So, okay. you know, we're going to get a fair amount of radiation, but if we have antioxidants inside of us, we can uh, neutralize the effects of that radiation. So antioxidants are found in plant food. So, you know, we're used to saying bright colors, eat your colors, the reds and the blues and the purples and the oranges, but there have been uh, even more studies that show that even in things that aren't brightly colored, things like mushrooms that might be white or brown and things like whole grains like oatmeal and brown rice, those have antioxidants in them as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So a plant-based diet and loading up your body full of antioxidants internally can help to mitigate some of that damage that's caused by, you know, not only the UV light, just the pollutants in our environment and um, the, the toxins we come into contact with every day. And those help, those same chemicals that are in the fruits and vegetables and, and yeah, mushrooms and other things tend to help us repair ourselves too because we can't avoid a certain amount of damage. I mean, just Absolutely. just living damages ourselves, but we have nice repair mechanisms. And thank God for those. Uh, they're, they're the plumbers and the drywall repairers and the electricians of our body, and they repair things when they get broken. And they need the tools, and those tools come from the fruits and vegetables. I like to say that you notice that the blueberries, blackberries, tomatoes, peppers, onions, all those things you mentioned, well, not onions, but all the other colored things, they don't sunburn. There's right. a reason they don't sunburn. It's because the chemicals that protect them, and we want to get those in our body. Absolutely right. Because just as you noted, just walking around on planet Earth, you're going to be mm-hmm. exposed to a certain number of mm-hmm. things that aren't necessarily good for you. But uh, if you're eating a great plant-based diet, it goes a long way to... Uh, to mitigating those effects. Now, Dr. Gilcrest, you had suggested, and I am quite interested in this because I, I have small children and uh, we have a, a teenage babysitter that takes them to the pool twice a week, and I am continually texting my babysitter saying, don't forget to apply, reapply sunscreen today with the children. So uh, tell us what your theory is on proper sunscreen application. Absolutely. So the number you get on the bottle is made by a lab test. That lab test is standardized by the FDA. And when they perform the test in the lab, they put it on very thickly. They put on two milligrams of sunscreen per square centimeter, which is essentially like cake frosting. Most people, not even I put on that much sunscreen, will put on half to a third of the amount that's applied in the lab test. So, yeah, SPF 30 would be plenty of sunscreen if we actually put it on as thickly as they do in that lab test, but we don't. Mm -hmm. So it's a good idea to take that number on the bottle and half it. You want to cut it at least in half, and if you've got SPF 30 written in your bottle, you're probably getting about a 15. Oh, my. Okay. So you want to make sure you're putting on enough. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that um, uh, enough, or you know what enough is. So one ounce, so about the amount of a shot glass, is how much you should use to cover your entire body. And a teaspoon of that shot glass should be on your face alone. Okay. And how often, then? You, uh, what the directions say, or what do you say, Dr. Gilchrist? Well, the directions say every two hours. Mm-hmm. However, chemically-based sunscreen, so sunscreens with avobenzone and oxybenzone, if you look at the back of your sunscreen label, you see all these chemicals, those actually probably break down in about half an hour of intense mm-hmm. sun. So they go even faster the label says. Yeah, but the titanium dioxide, the stuff that I like to put on that makes me look like a ghost, <laughs> that doesn't break down. I tell my You're wife, if, if I look like I've got cake icing on me, by golly, I have to be protected. <laughs> and she's, and I said, well, who's looking at me? I'm out in the vineyard working with my grapes. Who cares if the birds see me? I don't care. Mm-hmm. Right. 
Perfect. So what Dr. Tolbert was talking about is those mineral blockers, so the okay. zinc oxide, the titanium dioxide. Oh. Um, you know, you don't have to be super, super white. They cosmetic... Um, um, they do and have personal the clear. care product companies have come a long yes. way. Yeah, yes, they, they have. We were discussing yes. yeah, we they, were discussing yeah. that a couple of weeks ago back in the eighties. If you were a lifeguard, you know everybody had that white stuff right, on their yeah. nose and their cheeks like a football player an Indian, you know. <laughs> and now I see that for my children I can buy these tubes of uh, brand name stuff and they're clear almost, you know, right. and or they at least rub in much clearer. So kudos to that industry. Absolutely. So those, those mineral blockers, though, whether they're clear or white, they're going to have much better staying power than the chemical blockers. Doctor, i got a question for you. Besides the skin block that we've talked about, what are some other things that we can do for the health of the largest organ on our body? So once you're um, avoiding the sun and using sunblock and eating a plant-based diet, you also want to make sure that you're hydrating. hydrating. Yes, your skin needs water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what do you recommend? You know, I, years and years ago when I think Weight Watchers was really popular, they said eight eight-ounce glasses a day was the minimum. Yeah. Is, is that still is the that, deal? What's, what's the deal here on what do you recommend as a dermatologist for skin health? You know, it depends on the size of your body. So if, if you're a 220-pound man, you probably do need eight eight-ounce glasses a day because a lot of your body is made of water. If you're a 100-pound woman... You know, probably half that much is going to be fine. Otherwise, you're going to spend your day in the bathroom. So just theori- <laughs> theoretically, how about a 220-pound woman? <laughs> a 220-pound woman. Just theoretically, woman, uh, yes. Probably those eight ounces, uh, excuse me, those eight glasses a day are a good idea. Well, how about just how about just drinking so that your urine is really light, okay. very light amber colored, and it's not That's super concentrated? That's an excellent idea. Right. So instead of going by some artificial yeah. guideline right. that someone else makes up for you, you yeah. just listen your own body. Oh, yeah, but that, that's another thing every day I have to check. Well, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, gosh, bud. Uh, of course, bud can't see over his belly. To, no, I'm kidding. That's not... Belly, uh, he's actually very, very he's thin. Very Here's thin. the problem, though. If you take B vitamins, uh, yeah. oh, you know, that that's going to give you fluorescent pee, and so you don't know. I tell you what, when we come back, uh, we're going to... we're gonna. Can you hang with us, Dr. Gilchrist? Ooh. Absolutely. All right, we're talking with, awesome. <laughs> with Dr. Gilchrist from uh, Gilchrist. Uh, oh, by the way, the other thing I wanted to talk with you about when we come back is your uh, your special interest because you have some charities you're interested in too. We want to do that as well. Yes. But Dr. Heidi Gilchrist at gilchristdermatology.com joins us all the way by long lines from uh, California yes, where I guess indeed. it's sunny and beautiful as always today, right? Yes, it is. So where is Encinitas? My son is uh, out in uh, near Roseville. Uh, that's Northern California. Where is Encinitas? Encinitas is about half an hour north of San Diego. Oh, oh. so you're down in Southern California. Okay. Yeah, you have to use a lot of those zinc yeah. dioxide things down yes, there. Yes, I do. Yeah, that's good. All righty, and uh, you might want to check out the website, folks, gilchristdermatology.com. Yep. And when we come back, since we were talking about supplements, maybe we'll ask about can we do as much with supplements as you can by taking, you know, the, eating the vegetables and fruits mm-hmm. themselves. Because there are like fruit and veggie in a yeah, capsule absolutely. type supplements and other yes, things. There are. Uh, after all, Dr. Gilchrist, you have to know we're in the heart of like cow country and cattle country and people love their beef here. Um, I happen to be an advocate of grass-fed beef, you know, so that they're not getting corn and other things. They're eating, you know, right from the earth and getting that, that nutrient into you dr- indirectly. But uh, we'll see what your feelings on about that. Because I don't think we're going to have a lot of pure vegetarians that result of this show. But we'll talk about that and supplements. And take your phone calls when we come back. Absolutely. 1-800-748-7875 and 660-465-7225. Back in a minute. I cried a river. Can you tell if the leftovers from this dinner party are beginning to grow bacteria that could lead to severe diarrhea, vomiting, and stomach cramps? Listen. You can't see it either. Get leftovers into the refrigerator as soon as possible. Spoiled leftovers can make you very sick or worse. Roughly 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year, but you can keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Brought to you by the USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. Missouri's diverse natural resources offer countless outdoor experiences for hunters, fishermen, and trappers alike. These opportunities range from fishing big rivers, streams, and lakes to hunting deer and turkey or capturing an elusive fur bear. 
As you plan your next outdoor adventure, be sure to remember to purchase your hunting, fishing, or trapping permit. Your purchase helps to ensure these outdoor resources will be available for future generations to enjoy. This has been Missouri Conservation Agent Gary Miller. Hey, there's my son. Hey, Dad. Um, what's wrong with your voice? There is nothing wrong with my voice. Well, it's just sort of... Hello, Dad. Susan? Guys, I think it's about time to get in the car and maybe see some green things. What are these green things you speak of? This weekend, unplug. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. To find the forest nearest you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ag Council. Other arms reach out to me. Other eyes smile tenderly. We're back. It's 25 till the hour here on Healthy You. If it's Tuesday, it's Healthy You from 10 to 11. And, and uh, we'll take a look at this, Doctor. I've now got my Kevlar Speedo out. Oh, boy. That's a visual. That's, yeah, light. I'm struggling with that. Kevlar Speedo. My own invention. Woo, wow. Dr. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Heidi Gilchrist joins us. And I know that we asked for, and she promised 15 minutes, but we're having such a good time here. We asked for a few more minutes of her time. Uh, I think, ideally, we all know deep in our hearts that, gosh, the more vegetables we eat and fruits and all those good things grown right out of the earth and not processed, um, the better off we are. But let's be realists. Some of us just, we're, we got to have our beef. Uh, what do you tell your patients that just are addicted to a little bit of meat and they have to have it now and then, Dr. Gilchrist? Okay. That if you are eating uh, correctly, 90% of the time you're doing great and that, you know, your body has those internal mechanisms we were talking about to, um, to detox. Mm-hmm. So, you, you know, a little bit of meat, a little bit of dairy, a little bit of sugar, whatever it is that you need, yeah. a little bit of alcohol, that's okay as long as you're hitting, yeah. you know, those colorful vegetables and fruits and whole yeah. grains um, yeah. mostly throughout your day. Speaking of alcohol, I did notice the uh, just last segment when you mentioned a, a jigger full of, uh, of uh, slathering on the sunscreen. Mm-hmm. Bud really perked up here. I mean, he really, <laughs> when you mentioned the shot glass, I, I don't know. I'm not making any comments here. I'm just telling you here, since we're on the radio, you couldn't see that. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, what about supplements? I mean, there are, you can buy, uh, I think of the prototype, the one that I guess was most popularized in sort of a multi-level marketed product, Juice Plus. Everyone knows oh, about yeah, that. But but Amway has one, uh, mm-hmm. Nutra Life, all the, every good supplement manufacturer has what I call a fruits and veggies in a capsule, yeah. sort of concentrated type. Uh, is that i mean i know that's not a substitute but is that a good idea for people who just maybe kids who just uh, say Ugh, i cannot do the vegetable thing and there are kids out there like that what what I mean, can we make up for suppl- for lack of fruits and vegetables with supplements definitely you can make up some with supplements of course like you said the unprocessed version is always best but you know sometimes we just have to cover all our bases um i eat a, a strictly plant-based diet but I still, you know, swallow that multivitamin every day just to make sure I didn't miss anything. So there's, there's no harm at all, except maybe to your pocketbook. Some of those supplements can be a little bit expensive. No, that's, um, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Now, Dr. Gilchrist, how do you get your protein then? Tell us uh, with a plant-based diet. So protein is, uh, for me, comes in the form of beans, nuts, seeds, whole grains, mm-hmm. um, uh uh, soy products that are relatively unprocessed, like okay. uh, tofu, tempeh, soy milk. I don't really go in for the meat analogs, your your tofurkey uh, type things. They're okay. just taste terrible. They're too processed tasting yeah. for me. But uh, a little bit of soy in moderation. You know, soy kind of gets a bad rap, but yeah. in moderation, it actually can definitely form a, a staple part of a healthy diet. Yeah, not around here. We have fields and fields and fields <laughs> of soybeans. Oh, we yeah. are we are the uh, root of all, almost all soybean production in America, I'm guessing, around here. Yeah, and everyone eats those little beans. Now, the, a lot of the restaurants have those as, uh, as warm-ups, as appetizers. Oh, sure, the, the edamame. Edamame, yeah, yeah they're good. Go. Yeah. And then you can buy the little... Sort of the real spicy version of uh, soybeans too. You know what I mean? They, they mm, yeah, they have a real, not. real Keep zest them. to them. Okay. They're good. So at any rate, that's good stuff. Now, when you garden, do you garden uh, for root vegetables too? Uh, where do you put those in the spectrum? Are they important? Because we do a lot of that here. A lot of cold weather gardening with root vegetables. You know, turnips and beets and so forth. Well, here in Southern California, I don't really have a a uh, 
square inch of dirt to my name, so I, I mainly <laughs> container garden, okay. uh, which, which kind of rules out the root vegetables. But oh. for sure, okay. most things that come from a plant are going to have you know, your nutrients. Your yeah. root vegetables are going to have more uh, carbohydrates associated with yeah. them. Less protein. Well, they're good. Okay, those are complex carbohydrates. They're not... You know, you're, yeah. you're refined carbohydrates. They're good. They're good of a winter's night, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, a casserole of roast this. vegetables mm-hmm. with, uh, put a little roast of some grass-fed beef on there. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> All right. Hey, Dr. Gilchrist, we've had a blast talking with you. If folks would like to learn more about you and your practice, they can find you at gilchristdermatology.com. Um, when are you going to write that book? You're really a effervescent person. you got to write that book and make well, that DVD. Thank you. I will try to find time to <laughs> <laughs> Thank hey, you, thank you a, for finding time for us this morning. Yeah, yeah. We really Absolutely. appreciate it. You're most welcome. Thank you for having All me. All right. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it. Dr. Christine Gilchrist. Or, I mean, Hi. Heidi Gilchrist. Sorry. Uh, there's a Christine Gilchrist, who I know, who's a, mm-hmm. who's a famous gynecologist. Yeah. Yep. Heidi Gilchrist. I like that name, Heidi. Yeah. That's nice. I have a, I have a niece that's a uh, cousin, I guess, second cousin named Heidi. So... Um, I, once again, we hear about the virtues of fruits and vegetables. I yeah, think we, we all know Except that. Except I want to make you, uh, I want you to be careful, though, about the Uh-oh. California mushrooms. <laughs> I mean, you know, really. Well, now that's it's, a judgmental well, statement. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking it, of fruits and vegetables, Bud, yeah. we were just talking about that community garden. Yeah. I yeah, got yeah, word yeah. here a few days ago that they have, as Bud referred to it, copious amounts of beans and things. Tell us about that, mm-hmm. Bud. Yeah, uh, at the community uh, garden, which is, if you know where First Baptist Church is, it's around the corner from the schools. And uh, right next to the church, there's a field there, and we've placed a big community garden there. Mm-hmm. And um, as everyone has right now, plenty of beans. <laughs> we got a lot of beans. <laughs> So you are are more than welcome to uh, bring your pail along with you mm. and just pick away. Out so there. what do you do if you didn't partake in the planting and the and the cultivating and so forth, but you want to, you take some beans out? What how do you, how do folks give back? Oh, uh, is there a little is there a little pail there to throw a few bucks <laughs> in or something? No, well, you got to buy seeds for no, next year. No, yeah? no, it's this is just uh, something we do. Cause we just want everybody to have a, a shot at some well, that's uh, really uh, nice. vegetables, and a lot of that stuff is uh, something that wow. you know everybody's got beans right now. Mm-hmm. But then there's some folks who didn't plant any. I didn't plant and, beans. Uh, I have tomatoes coming out the year. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I do want to mention also. The uh, produce up on the square. Yes. Now, yeah, help me out. Is that Tuesday? Is that today? No, it's Thursday. Thursday. I think. Thursdays. Yeah, I okay. often see the tents Thursday. up on Thursdays. So don't yes. forget, folks. There's and it's I early just, in the afternoon. Right yes. now. Oh mm-hmm. my goodness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just anything you can think of up there. Well, hey, I, I've got I've got yeah. an idea to help you out. You know, so. most of our communities are givers. Let's just yeah, think about are. how we operate around here. That's the way we, we make it through. We are givers. This is true. And we are not takers. So I've got an idea. If you are going out to pick beans at the community garden, or going to get a few pickles for your BLT tonight, Mm -hmm. or going to go get a melon, you know, for a carrion dinner this Mm. week. How about you just make a donation to your favorite local charity? Okay. Sounds good. You know, that just gives, you know, to your favorite local charity. Yeah, there's the food pantry, the clothes closet. There's all kinds of charities. Exactly. So if you're you're a giver and not a taker, and you just don't feel right about picking a five-gallon bucket of green beans, I never feel right about picking a five-gallon bucket. And the new (laughs) Charity, buy Bud a full body speedo, please. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're going to try to so get that one. Kevlar, yeah. Kevlar to go. protect me from. And reminder: uh, speaking of outside sun protecting, yes. uh, the swimmers are every day, every uh, Tuesday, Thursday, right yeah. at eleven mm-hmm. o'clock. At and 11 today o'clock. the weather is holding out nicely, yeah, so they will be, they will be out there. The and Memphis Mermaids. I just do want to say one more time: yes, watch sir. out for the kids. This will be the twenty first coming up and they'll be you'll be going to work one morning and all of a sudden on every corner whimmy there's children there's on every kids corner running across the street and doing what kids do so just uh for all the counties in our area except schuyler and schuyler starts on the 15th so uh, but just watch out for them because they'll be out there and again i guess as a I testimony to uh having your own garden or you know getting your your food as close to the production source as you know when we come back we'll talk about the the revenge that has been uh, afflicting people across the nation. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, a little Just revenge. A little stomach deal. On some imported lettuce. Yeah. At Red Lobster and Olive Garden, I guess. Mm-hmm. Those are yep. the two uh, chains that have suffered, yeah. you know. It's still a mystery. And it's a shame that, you know, a given chain or a restaurant takes such a beating <laughs> when one of their products, yeah. that they, you don't know that. You can't see these things. No. They're not on the product. No. 
Uh, <laughs> at any rate, uh, we'll... Uh, <laughs> and I'm not a shareholder in either of those, okay? I'm just... I mean, you, you can see how devastating that'd be for a restaurant to yeah. have that. You know, you buy buy a bag of lettuce and serve it, and someone yeah. comes down yeah. sick. But we'll talk a little bit about that. And other questions, if you have them, 465-7225. And Sense of the pine, you know how I feel. Oh, freedom is mine, and I know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life. Well, we're back. It's I hope you enjoyed those messages from our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> Okay, uh, so the story, of course, you've heard it, and I guess many of you have probably sweared off of uh, <laughs> bagged produce, right? Um, <laughs> health officials in Iowa, close to home here in uh, Nebraska, said they identified a prepackaged salad mix as a likely source of this multi-state uh, outbreak of mm-hmm. cyclospora. Yeah. That's actually a parasite. It's not a bacteria. But it's a germ, and it can lead to a significant, significant it, problem. It can do uh, its damage. Yeah, and lots of uh, dehydration. You get fever, flu-like mm-hmm. symptoms. And uh, sometimes, though, people are not affected as severely. So, um, and, you know, there can be a delay. We often think of food poisoning as sort of within 12 hours mm-hmm. of eating the offensive mm-hmm. item. This can occur up to a week later. And that's sort of the way parasites go. There's another parasite that can bother you called Giardia that often gets into contaminated well water or you know, uh, water supplies. It's um, in there, and it's just hanging out on the yeah, corner. Parasites, for a you while know, and yeah, parasites. You know, yeah. It's sort of like parasites in our animals. You know, worms are parasites, right? Yeah. They don't really kill you. Right? I mean, it doesn't bother you right away. It's sort of a slow thing that gets to you. Um, it's okay, though, according to Iowa officials, uh, to resume eating salad mixes currently sold in the state. They've identified the, uh, you know, the distributors of those, and uh, I guess those have been eliminated. Through so most of the contaminated. Um, uh, mix has already worked its way through but i guess that's a testimony to just growing your own and yeah. uh mm-hmm. you know even if it says washed on the bag mm. still a good idea to wash it you know still i'm going to give a shout out it. to our local library program this summer the children's library program one of their programs one week was our jennifer mayfield i believe the children said mm-hmm. from our extension mm-hmm. yeah and she sent the children home with a little tub some soil and some seeds to Ooh. grow their own lettuce and do you know this week the Kyger kids are going to prepare lettuce salads for wow. us for supper one awesome. night this week out of those little tubs well, that they got from the library. That. Program. Wasn't that a neat yeah, idea? We kept one of them idea. alive. The other one died. So we're going to have very small salads. But nonetheless, <laughs> okay. we are cutting the lettuce this week. Sample. And you know, that was just for the children to learn how to grow their own and sure. prepare it for their family. And do you have your own eggs? Or do you do you get eggs from a you know from a local person? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we my wife likes making authentic the original Caesar salad with raw Ooh, eggs. with the raw eggs. Yeah. And and we do that and it's great. Mm-hmm. I mean and I feel mm-hmm. absolutely confident. Really? Yeah. Yes. Do you have the recipe for that? Oh, it is. It's right oh, up there with man. eggnog. I just get nervous. And about it's not. That. It's not this. It's not this sort of creamy. You know, just mm. this side of mayonnaise Caesar. It's actually uh, a very clear, translucent uh-huh, Caesar. Yeah. That with some shaved Parmesan or Romano, mm-hmm. oh, it is just to die for. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's and great. I and I well, know that's the original well. Caesar salad, and like I said, it's right up there with eggnog because th- eggnog is supposed to be yeah. raw eggs as well. I just I don't try know. to get a salad anymore at any mm. great restaurant. Oh, with, there's with not going to be raw it. eggs Caesar. Salad and I have restaurant. to. I always like playing a game with the with the you know the server when I want something rare, super rare, like mm. hamburger special. Mm-hmm. I want it rare. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, we can't do that, sir. A good said, veterinary can get it I back said, up look, I'm an OB. I'm used to being sued. I'm not going <laughs> to sue you. Don't worry about it. Okay? I know what it feels like when you're not responsible for something to get sued for it. I'm not going to hold you responsible. That's okay. I just want my rare beef. 
So once in a while you can do it. They wink, wink, and say, we're not supposed to do that. We'll see what the chef can do. Oh, okay. And it works out okay. Lay it on the chef. Yeah, it's always the <laughs> chef's fault. In another uh, bit of news, now, moms, if you want your kids to be smart, Uh-oh. you'll breastfeed. And if you make that decision, experts are saying that it's not because of the mother's milk. It's because of the IQ that led to the decision to make breastfeeding. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, so, it's an interesting okay. study. Um, so if they, smarter women are more likely to breastfeed after ba- their babies, it only stands to reason their children would inherit higher IQs. So. It's nature, not nurture. So what they're arguing is, and these are some uh, some Scottish researchers, I think. Ooh, Scottish. Dr. Jeff Durr, uh, British Medical Journal, actually said that they looked at the IQs, uh, calling the higher IQs of children of breastfeeding women purely circumstantial, not a factor of the mother's milk, they reported an IQ advantage of about four points in children who were breastfed, mostly attributable to brainy mothers. So the argument is when they, when they selected, when they compared the IQs of the women who chose to breastfeed, they were higher IQs. So, so it, that means, gals, if you want to be smart, you'll breastfeed. So I've got to really be careful how I say this, but a brainy mother who breastfeeds is going to have a smart child. Well, so there's a 4% chance. Yeah, see, this may relate to some of the studies that, frankly, I mean, when you look at um, lifestyle and how, you know, exercise uh, and this and that may help reduce your risk of this or that disease, mm. they always have to factor out a lot of the, the fact that um, sometimes people that choose to, to live healthier are, like with the Alzheimer's type sure. studies, yeah. people that choose to live healthier may actually have just an inborn nature defense against right. some of those diseases. Okay. It's not so, now that's not to say you shouldn't choose a healthy lifestyle. No, you certainly no. can modify it. And they did see some protective effect of the milk alone aside from the IQ, but it was a modest one compared to that. Yeah. Well, I, I think about the immunities. And which is why for years I, yeah. we've been told that, that that's the case. Which is that's why my case. smart children can thank the fact that I was smart enough to marry a woman who <laughs> breastfed her kids because she was smart enough to make that decision. Alrighty I'm there. on that page with you. Yeah. I agree. I did the same with Yeah, it's a smart right. move to make. Mm-hmm. And so more and more women are doing that. And, and it's not, look, if you, we're talking four IQ points. I mean, come on, it's not that big of a deal anyway. So this is not to say if you don't, if you choose not to breastfeed that you're a dummy. I don't dummy. know if it's your fourth try at the SATs, <laughs> it might be enough. <laughs> You know, who knows? And, and there's, it's true that I think that um, the quality of the breast milk actually is probably influenced by the diet you eat as well. We've talked about the importance of omega-3 fatty acids and how anti-inflammatory they are and how they seem to have something to do with good neuron connections and good brain development and grain sustenance. And so um, that's why more and more, in fact, I think most obstetricians these days are saying to moms, if you don't like your salmon or your trout, um, or your albacore tuna uh, while you're pregnant, then good idea to take the supplements mm-hmm. because yeah. those omega-3s are good. And similarly, if you're breastfeeding, make sure that the milk reflects a good diet because, you know, you are what you eat, and so is your milk mm-hmm. to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. So that's really important stuff. I Were your kids breastfed? Because they're so smart. I did not breastfeed. No, your but, kids. Uh, well, that explains you, but what about yeah. your kids? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would say you're living, you're living proof. Did they study you, know you in this study? They, no. <laughs> they don't study me for anything. We know that your kids have Brenda to thank for both for their good looks and their smarts. It, exactly, <laughs> which is where the genetics come in and the milk stops. That's what I, yeah. I mean, you know. Uh, no, we were, we were all up with the six-month thing. Yeah, right. After uh-huh. six months, we thought that was a little strange. So, but we, we did. Yeah. We <laughs> yeah, say. L- l- let's explain that term he's like one of these guys that tells me yeah we're pregnant doctor we, yeah yes. and we're going to deliver the baby as the, as he's over there sleeping in the corner while the mom is toiling during her labor right well as they were going across the hallway <laughs> the nurse said do you want him in there and she said yes <laughs> <laughs> So yes, we delivered. During was that was that in the day when fathers were were included oh, or no, not included? Not okay, included. I thought you were in the waiting room, okay, right? I thought so. Waiting yeah. in the room in the waiting room. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you're an obstetrician. When did that? When did that landscape change? No, I mean, really, when did you start? To tell you the honest truth, we had a doctor who wanted who wanted. Okay, who have you involved us? And mm-hmm. we did, but at that time, though, generally that speaking, when was that? Eighties, seventies. 
70. Yeah, but it really started changing before I trained. I trained in the late 80s, and that was yeah. probably, I mean, probably the, the change had already started then. It okay. was probably mid-70s it started. That's yeah. when things started, the momentum. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes that's an interesting discussion because sometimes we all know in the business that oftentimes well-meaning relatives, um, <laughs> how do I say, <laughs> too many, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because so everyone wants mm -hmm. to be there and be supportive. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, they're mom and mom-in-law and grandma-in-law and grandma and grandma-in-law and, you know, mm -hmm. cousin-in-law are interpreting every little blip on the tracing and every little this and that and it, it, it's difficult because the poor mom is just trying to get, just trying to get yeah. through this thing yeah. and it's hard because well-meaning people that are trying to give advice you know it's sort of the too many chefs can spoil a good soup oh, you know how yeah. that goes so it's an interesting dance that we dance sometime and um, patients are wise i think to limit their numbers during labor they are and yeah. i'll tell you what the, the, the nurse, that's my opinion the nurses I mean. we have are so good at this but but there there's a little filtering going on there and they're watching out for mom and oh you know, yeah a lot of times they'll say could would you excuse me could you yeah. you guys just yeah. you know. and the cool thing is that at our place the nurses are really one-on-one -on -one, uh, most of the yes, time i mean it's yes. rare that we have more than you know a couple people in labor that's rare uh and so and the, the staffing there is is just really able to be more dedicated more exclusive so it becomes almost like a doula situation like they use in south america you know where yeah. so are you keeping coach. track dr tobler how many babies as of say this weekend have you delivered in your career i don't know probably pushing three thousand wow I don't know. pushing haha -ha. pushing three thousand yeah. <laughs> been there <done> yeah that. <laughs> and um <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, every labor's different. You know, it's funny because you'd think, well, it becomes 3, pretty routine. 000, but yes. every labor's different. It's like every person is different. Yeah. Uh -huh. Had a patient yesterday, God love her, she nothing, I mean, it's funny the way people are wired. Yes. She just, nothing, no medicine at all during the labor. God at, Or during the pushing her. phase or anything is done. And other people, man, you know, they're not even dilated yet, and we need to we need to be giving them some happy juice or some, you know, comfort juice yeah. mm -hmm. or if something. I come here, and it's and I that's the way I am too. I mean, you know, look, I, everyone, if you look at your own pain tolerance, you mm -hmm. know, some people. Well, that's us guys. Yeah, some people tolerate pain really well, and others don't, and that's the marvel and the mystery of it all. It's just, mm -hmm. and a lot of that's cultural too. You'll find that different um, cultures, different uh, ethnic mm -hmm. groups, different races, different even religious mm -hmm. uh, affiliations. It's just different. So it becomes, it's an interesting, uh, interesting thing as you go through it. And that's why the nurses are very, very sensitive and attuned to that. Because everyone yeah. has their own fears and their trepidations and their anxieties. And yeah. It all works out eventually. <laughs> One way or another, we get the baby out, you know. Yep. It's a beautiful thing about obstetrics. It's simple. You have two choices. When to deliver and how to deliver. And th those are pretty easy, you know. Very good. My OB... Uh, wife says when that baby is ready, that's when they're going to have it. And there's nothing else you can do before or yeah. after. It's going to make very much different. Yeah. So, um, well, Lisa, the railroad tracks don't really work. Now, you were talking about the contact dermatitis mm -hmm. attributed yes. to some weeds. Yes. The interesting thing is, remember our discussion with um, Dr. Uh, Seesmeyer? Yes. The it doesn't have to be poison ivy. Mm -mm. There are weeds that you just buy... Boy, how many times have you tried to pull a weed out of your garden or out of, uh, you know, the, the gravel in your driveway or whatever, mm -hmm. and it slips and your hand just gets all of that juice and the weed's still in the ground and you have mm -hmm. a few leaves. And I can't help but think that those, we do have minor and less mm -hmm. minor reactions to those. So what was the strategy used on your kids today? Because so they we had ha it, And there were two different rashes. So yeah. we had one with what was very obvious to be poison mm -hmm. of some extent and one that was sort of mystery. Mm -hmm. So the treatment that we all agreed upon was a shot. And of some steroids. Of some steroids, yeah. yes. And then some mm -hmm. very potent um, uh, pharmacy script uh, cortisone So cream, more steroids, but uh, topical. For topical. Yeah. And then uh, we steroids. were to buy some Benadryl as yeah. well. So we're going to rev them up with steroids, yeah. bring them down with, bi with Benadryl. So I'm sure everybody wants to be at my house tonight. Well, to it sounds like, sounds like your kids, kids are just little Alex Rodriguez's <laughs> and they're going to be suspended for the rest of the season. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how this is going to turn out, but we've got swollen eyes and uh, blisters on our legs, and so it's it's. I, a for one, am glad to see baseball putting the hammer down yeah. and putting an end to the whole use of, you know, mm -hmm. altering the body-altering things. Steroids. I, I mm -hmm. just like to see natural performance, you natural know? Natural athletes. I mean, actually, from a political perspective, if they want to have the, we believe in, you know, performance-enhancing substance league, 
that's fine and label it as such but don't tell us that you're doing just lots of workouts and you're just a good athlete because you you're blah, strong blah, blah. yeah come on let's Talking heads. don't don't fool us no spin with us right well we hope that you enjoyed our little no spin healthy you zone today and uh hope you'll join us every week from 10 to 11 here on kmem 100.5 for bud for producer lisa dr randy tobler wishing you a healthy week remember this week be well share it with someone you love eat those fruits and vegetables and protect all of your body including your skin at the community garden where you're community. welcome you're we'll be listening back. to the best in area news weather and sports on america's best country 100.5 kmem memphis missouri